Welcome to Fullerton College Basketball on SportsnetUSA.net. It's the playoff edition from the Hornets Nest as your Fullerton College Hornets, number six seed in the Southern California Regional, host the Cuesta College Cougars. And tonight's action from the Hornets Nest on SportsnetUSA.net. Corey Naiman alongside me, Mark Havlovich, my traveling buddy, Ed Ford, and behind us, Ryan Osborne on the C-A-M-E-R-A. -E it's going to be a good one, Mark. Lillerton comes in at 21-7, and seven, the first time they've had 20 wins in a season since 2007-2008. Perry Webster in his first year has a squad in the playoffs for all-conference performers. They're going to host old school. Well, not old school, just an old hat and Rusky Blair in his quest to college Cougars as they're 22-9 and nine, looking to get out of here, and we'll see what happens in this first round. Well, technically, first round matchup. They call it the second here tonight. Well, it's the sixth team against the 11th team when you look at it, but these two teams already played each other. They started the season off against each other. Quest to College comes off with a victory. And why do they do that? Well, they've got Rusty Blair, a coach who's been around Corey for 24 seasons. And when you look at Coach Blair being around for 24 seasons, five times, Coach of the Year in the Western State Conference. He's taken his team to the finals once. He's been in the playoffs 13 times when you look. Cuesta College made a lot of free throws. That put them into the victory column. You need to get out there and make your free throws. Fullerton, a team that is a three-point shooting team. My friend, they don't go to the line too often. The last time they played Cuesta College, they went to the line four times. They've got to figure out a way to get to the line against this Cuesta College team tonight. If they can't get to the charity stripe tonight in a playoff game, Fullerton could be going home early. Yeah, and that's what Coach Rusty Blair told me. They could be going home early because they're still looking for that chemistry. Well, not really that chemistry, that cohesiveness that the team needs to move past the first round. And it's going to be an interesting and exciting battle here tonight. And we'll get into the starting lineups, Mark, for the visiting quest to College Cougars. In the backcourt, it'll be Binyat Hevia out of Spain, a sophomore, six feet, 175 pounds, Western Conference selection, all conference. Karim Ozel, a six foot freshman from Turkey, 175 pounds. And in the front court, three forwards, Evgeny Moiseev, a 6'5", 200-pound sophomore from Russia, education center number 1451. Ben Peterson gets to start tonight, 6'6", 220, the exotic locale of Atwater, California. And Rafael Ilaferiu, a 6'7", 215-pound sophomore from Limassol, Cyprus, rounds out the starting five for Rusty Blair, assisted by Casey Blair. They're the 11th seed, 22-9, and nine, Blair in his 24th season. What, did Coach Blair get lost on one of his recruiting trips and ended up in California? I mean, this is an international basketball team. They really do. They have a big man that can play down low. That's going to be the answer for them. And on the flip side, you've got almost an all-conference team for Fullerton in the starting lineup in tonight's game. Perry Webster in his first season. Tom Gurrell in his first assisted. Bernard Burrell also assistant coach in his first, and Roger C, the old man, and the C, 25th season.
Nice turnout tonight here at the Hornets Nest. Behind us, Nick Buscardo and his baseball team. Coach Smith, they're back here supporting basketball. Brian Crooks across the way. Tim Burns has been walking around. It is the who's who of Fullerton College coaching going on right now. You look at this starting lineup again for this Fullerton College team, Corey. You know, it really has got to be a team that's got to make their three-point shots tonight. They live and die from three-point country. And, I mean, yeah, their numbers are outrageous for a season. But when you live and die by the three-point, it's that old thing. You live. It's like you and I getting a double-double and feeling good. And then there's those nights that it's a salad bar because we aren't going to put on any more weight. And it's bland and ugly. Fullerton can't be bland and ugly if they want to win the game tonight. No, they didn't shoot that bad against Cyprus in their loss in the final game of the season. They just couldn't get it done at the end of the ball game. They shot 8 of 21. That's 38%. You'll take that as a team. But, again, they didn't convert down the stretch. Perry Webster says their defense didn't play well. Mark Pavlovich said their offense didn't play well. Well, when those two things aren't playing well, you're probably not going to win the game. They shot 38% from three, 40% from the field. They were led by Julian Richardson with 17 and 10. McBride, 13 and 10. And Kenny Barnes had all of his 15 points in the second half. And you're right, Mark. They can't play like they played against Saddleback. One of 14 three-point shooting, it's not going to get it done. But for Cuesta, they're a team that we talked to Coach Blair. They're still finding their identity. He said, yeah, if we connect, we got a chance to win. If we don't, it's going to be a long ride in a short game. Well, the other thing is, too, neither one of these teams, even though you think Cuesta has the advantage with a big man down low or a couple big men down low, both these teams average 36 rebounds a game. It's not one of those games, Corey, where somebody is necessarily going to dominate defensively on the boards against the other guy. A lot of one and duns. We know that happens with three-pointers, but for Quest on the flip side too, the most assists they have on a team per game is three. They're not a team that sets each other up to make a basket. Fullerton on the flip side, at least they've got somebody out there, Ian Fox, that sets people up. Ian Fox, 6.8 assist a game. The general for Fullerton's got to have a good game tonight. The winner of this game will take on either Mount Sac or Chafee. Phil Austin, how you doing? Will take on Chafee or Mount Sac in the second round. And again, the starting lineup says Cuesta, the visiting team. They said it was a long ride down here and already a long day after three playoff games, type, play, type games at the end of the season. Hevia, number one in green. Ozell out there, number five. Moisib, number 33. Elefthiriu with the ponytail, number 44 on your screen. And Ben Peterson, you see them in green with the white numbers. He's wearing number 35. And for the Hornets in white, Lake McBride in white, number 10, as you see him crossing half court. Isaiah Clark, number 12, will jump center. Kenny Barnes, number 11. He needs to get off early if Fullerton wants to get in. Julian Richardson, 23 on the far side, and Ian Fox on the Fullerton side, number 32. And the tip is controlled by Fullerton. Danny Yee, Savan Azizian, and David Allegria are the officials for this first round matchup. And there's McBride, Fox, Richardson around the perimeter. Screen set, no go. Clark, baseline, back out to Fox. We'll give you the lineup as they go. McBride for three. That's going to be short. Rebound tapped out of there. Hevia. Quick outlet to Ozell. Ozell working on Fox. The defense by Fox. 30 seconds gone by in this first round matchup. Ozell penetrates. Dishes Peterson, and he traveled. And there was, there was the one time he tried to set up an assist. You watch defensively for Cuesta. They're playing a box and one. Basically, it's a zone where a man comes out and plays man to man in that box and one. We'll see if they continue that defensively for Cuesta. And good defense by Isaiah Clark. He didn't go for the pump fake, stood his ground, and made the travel happen. Richardson had a nice job of assisting against Cyprus. He had five in the loss. They lost 71-78. Here's Richardson down. Power move up, no good. Rebound by Peterson. That's his first rebound. Heavy with the bounce pass. Moisev out of Russia, up to Ozell. 
Spain, Cyprus. And that is Ethereal gets cut off by Barnes. Here's Ethereal. Good defense by Richardson. Almost another travel. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Heavier. Forces a deep three. Back rim, no good. Barnes with the rebound. So no score here. 18-23 to play first half. Just started. Both teams a little rusty. Barnes on the interior. Fox. Corner for McBride. Looks good. No good. Rebound far side is Clark. No good. Get, follows his own shot. No. Here's Peterson. Peterson's second rebound of the game. And Ozell. Double team up top. He left the area. Hevia walked through the lane over to Peterson for two. Peterson has two points, two rebounds, two nothing. Cougars, 17-50 is a point. At the time, the point first score, Clark on the baseline. Richardson to McBride. They want to try to get Clark going underneath. He's working on the left area. Spins around, left block, puts it up, leaves it short. And there's Peterson controlling the boards. That's number three. Good interior defense by Cuesta. Forcing Fullerton to try to establish something down low. They just haven't yet. And Fullerton's going with that man-to-man -man defense, Corey. They're really trying to take away anyway as we get another travel by a really nice switch. And that's what you need to do when you play man-to-man -man defense is switch defensively. Fullerton does that well. Thing is, they've started this game 0 for 5, not from three-point country. Down low, three feet away. Nerves need to just settle down for this Fullerton team. And I think you think that's a good thing as they're starting off down low. They'll work inside out. Here's Clark again, down low. Splits two. No good. Can't convert. And Hevia comes out of the pack. At the three-point line. Thought about taking a three. He left Theria for a three. He rims it in and out. And here's McBride. And Richardson. Drives, dumps down low. Kenny Barnes controls it off glass. That's his game. Kenny Barnes with the first two for Fullerton. It is two to two with 16.33 to play first half. You like seeing Kenny Barnes go down low because he's got that quick first step to the basket. Have you? In a Therio. Back out to Ozell out of Turkey. In a Therio out of Cyprus. And there's Ozell, splits the defenders. Back out to left area, pulls up, no good from 16, and there's a loose ball foul. You're going to call Julian Richardson with a hold against Ben Peterson. And that foul could have gone either way, but what they're going to do is they're going to get a little chicken wing grab down low is what they're calling by the officials. Inbound to Peterson. Up there you to Moisev. And they set it up with 23 on the shot clock. 2-2, two, two, four minutes gone by, first half. Cuesta College out of San Luis Obispo. That area is Moise. Lethario, 10 on the shot clock, working on Barnes. That man-to-man -man pressure forces out to Hevia. Underneath Fox, nice scoop shot for two by Mignot Hevia. 4-2, Cougars. Here's Fox penetrating dishes. Richardson for a three. The first three of the game belongs to Julian. The team's leading scorer at 14 points puts him in the lead for the first time at five to four. And what he'll do is if somebody comes out and picks a bump on that, he will drive to the basket. Three just in and out, missed on there, Corey. As Mozeev tries to get it and can't. And there's a travel on Kenny Barnes. Good defense by Bignan Hevia as he cut off the lane. And you hear the crowd behind us saying he wasn't set. Doesn't have to be. It was either a charge or a travel. You take the travel right here. Yeah, because really it wasn't anything where it would be called a block because what he did is he caused the offensive player to change direction. He didn't use a body to make him change direction. He used a position to make him change direction. Good call by the officials. 15-12 to play. Lineup still the starters with Hevia. He left the area. We'll take the ball out. Moisive. Ozell and Peterson for the Cougars. Cuesta hasn't set any high screens or anything to free anybody up yet against this man-to-man -man defense for the Hornets. Fullerton is trying to be stultifying tonight on that defensive side of the ball, and there's that screen set. But there's a foul, a blocking foul. 
they're going to get Kareem Ozell. First personal, first team foul, 14-59 to play in the first half. Moving screen is what they got him for. Fullerton with the lead, 5-4. to four. Fox with the assist of Richardson. Here's the second assist of Rivers. Richardson takes a three. No good. Moisev high for the board. He's an all-conference performer. Down low to Peterson. Moisev working on Clark. They want to travel behind us. And rough play between Peterson and Clark, as you see at the free throw line. Clark hedged to Moisev with 10. Double team by Clark around the perimeter. Ozell, Moisev with three. And there's the third traveling call of the evening for Cuesta. And into the ball game will be Matthijs Vandemars. So Vandemars in the ball game. We're 21 in green. He comes in for Moisev. Vandemars out of the Netherlands. That's Clark. McBride, Richardson, Barnes, and Fox remain on the floor for the Hornets. Coach Blair trying to find some offense. Corey, his team is not being aggressive against the Hornets at all. Give it to really good defense. A really good offense, except for the miss there. There's Clark with the putback, and one. Heads to the line for a three-point opportunity. Foul on Rafael Leferiu, his set first personal, second team foul. The offense was set up perfect against the zone, gets to the interior. Richardson missed a point blank shot, but Clark is there for his third rebound. Roberto is coming into the game now. Roberto Montovani, a 6'8", sophomore center, 235 pounds out of Combine Prep Academy, originally from Cyprus. Larkana Cypress, not the Cypress down the street. <laughs> it's not a Cypress charger. Short on the free throw is Clark, 7-4, to four, Hornets. I'd rather go to the other Cypress. The one down the street? No, the other one. Oh, okay. And here's Hevia to Ozell. Man-to-man -man pressure. Fullerton on your TV screen. Watch how they set up that defense and force the difficult shots 15, 20 feet away from the bucket. That shot is... A no good. Randomir's kicks it out to Ozell. Bounce pass down low. Montovani. He gets in there and a nice pass from Ozell. 7-6 to six horn. It's 13-30 to play first half. Fortuitous bounce for Cuesta on that. Hornets in the right position. It just drops into somebody with a green jersey. Here's Fox pull up jumper from 11 feet away is good. Nice movement by Fox without the ball, and that's how you get open to get little 15-foot shots, moving without the basketball. It'll be a hold on Blake McBride, his first personal, second team foul. 13.07 to play first half as Adam Johnson, number 14, checks in for the Hornets out of Rancho, Las Vegas, Nevada. And Jason Collins, a 6'2", sophomore from Corona, Norco High School. So we'll reset both lineups as a fresh shot clock with 13 minutes to play and the Hornets up nine to six. Vandermars with the ball, Montovani working on Johnson, gets into the lane, left-handed hook shot, no good, knocked out of bounds by Johnson. So a second chance opportunity coming to the Cougars. So Lefterio, Vandermars, Hevia, Montovani, and Ozell on the floor for Cypress, or excuse me, for Cuesta. And there's a pass back out to Montovani. He sets the high screen mark on Collins. Kick in the corner left there. He is. Working on Barnes in the lane. Nice move. No bucket. Rebound blocked by Johnson. Here come the Hornets. Richardson. Fox. Richardson drives the lane in the key, pulls up from five. You see the bucket there, and you see just how easy it was for the Hornets. His fifth point, 11 to six year score, 12 15 to play first. And there's another travel. And Mark, this is the defense that Coach Perry Webster wants from the start of this game. As we see Daniel Solis checking in a 5 10 sophomore from Pittsburgh. And also Andres Aguado out of Malaga, Spain. 
So the quest is going a little smaller. You're gonna try and match up against the physicality against the Hornets on the court here. Four turnovers already at the 12.05 mark for Cuesta. Fullerton is starting to get into their brains and that works their advantage. One, two, two, defense by the Cougars. Fullerton working around it with Fox, Barnes at the free throw line, back to Fox. They play catch, D3 straight away. Oh, oh, oh! And that's the second assist by Kenny Barnes. First three, giving him five points by Ian Fox. 14 to six, Hornets. Montovani working on that right box. Extended against Johnson. Nice up and under. Forces contact, doesn't go Barnes. Here's Fox again, kick out. Richardson thought about the three, he brings it out. So Richardson with the ball, down low to Barnes. Fox at the top of the key. Johnson cutting through the lane and Collins. Barnes got away with a walk. And he puts it in here for his fourth point and a timeout taken, a full timeout taken by Cuesta with 11.08 to play in the first half of this first round matchup of the CCCAA playoffs, 16 to six Hornets. This is Fullerton College Hornet basketball on sportsnetusa.net. Ian Fox so far, perfect from the floor. He's got seven points a game, taking three shots. Yeah, he's made them all. He's got seven points. Kenny Barnes has got four. He's perfect from the floor. Julian Richardson with three. Isaiah Clark, Isaiah Clark with two for Cuesta. Well, nobody's got more than two points. And of course, when you look at numbers, well, you always think about it, buying a new car. Well, you want to get a new car? Don't forget Miller Toyota of Anaheim. New and used Toyotas. Maybe you need to get parts for that current Toyota. Or maybe down the road, somebody just got their master's degree. And that beautiful wife at home says, what should I buy him? Well, no, you're not going to get a car, but you do have the Masters. But if you were, you'd get that car from Miller Toyota of Anaheim, the proud sponsor of community college sports and most of all education. Miller Toyota located at Euclid and the 91. Weston will have the ball out of the timeout. 11.08 to play first half. And they have Vandermars, Ozell. Uh, Guado at the point, Daniel Solis with the ball, and Montovani patrolling the middle. They have the ball down by 10 points. And Fullerton's first playoff game in a long time, and you like the atmosphere at the Hornets' nest. Fullerton still in that man-to-man. -man. Richardson on the ball. And now Collins matches up, and Solis tries to drive on Fox at the right elbow. Good defense by the Hornets. They play help well with five, pull up three, and that's good by Karim Ozell. A very tough three, Corey, when you look at it all together. I mean, coverage down there by Richardson was excellent against Cuesta. And for Fullerton, Collins with the ball in the corner to Barnes. There's Fox, hit a three already from there. Richardson on the near side, and that ball is tipped and stolen by Ozell. He comes out of the pack, one-on-one -on -one with Fox, lays it up and lays it in. He's got five quick points, and the lead is cut to five. Here's Fox underneath. No good. Rebound over the back. Loose ball foul. Easy call on Adam Johnson. His first. Team's third. And when Fox drives to the basket there, he knows he's going to get contact. Every once in a while, a player loses concentration and looks more for the contact than to make the hoop. Fox does it on the last play. Doesn't get the bounce for the Hornets. Van der Mars to Ozell has the last five for the Cougars. Solis. Back to Ozell. Pull up 17 footer. That's good. He's warming up, isn't he? Oh, I tell you what, he's got something in the oven, and it's starting to taste good for Cuesta. It was 16 to 6 before the timeout. He's got the last seven. It's 16 to 13 with 9.33 to play. And this is the first half. Johnson playing catch with Richardson. Collins, open three, trying to counter. He's short. Rebound Montovani. He's got two points. That is his first rebound of the game. And the Mars back to Montalbani. And Ozell, nobody's going to stop him. I'll leave it for Roberto. And he misses the easy chip. He gets his own rebound. He's underneath. Perry Webster up off the bench, wants a double dribble. There's a deep three. No good. And the rebound by Johnson, missed by Aguado. 16 13 Hornets. 
Ten-point lead cut down to three. Barnes working underneath, and he traveled. 8.53 to play. Blake McBride checking in for Kenny Barnes. So McBride joins Johnson, Fox, Richardson, and Collins. And when we think about the rebound battle, well, Quest has got 11. Fullerton's got nine out there. Offensive rebounds, Fullerton's got two. Quest has got three. Defensive rebounds is where they're just cleaning up the boards right now against each other. So Lee's pulls up for two. That back rim, McBride for his second rebound. Richardson and Fox playing catch. Fullerton, not a very deep team. They like to play their starters most of the game. Johnson in the corner, down low. Nice cut by McBride and good recognition by the big man Johnson. 18-13, their first points in three minutes. 8-18 to play, first half. Nice drive by Ozell, gets around Collins. Almost blocked, I think he got a tip. And loose ball foul called on Roberto Montavani, his first personal third team foul. As Alex Wandi checking in at a Sofia Bulgaria. And Roberto goes and sits down. On the floor for the Hornets, Ian Clark comes, Ian Clark, Isaiah Clark comes back in. And Blake McBride down low with Richardson, Collins, and Fox up top. It's nice being on a first name basis with this quest to team. 18-13, your score. Under eight to play first half, McBride in the corner. He drives. Backs up on Vandemars and puts up a pretty 15-footer from the baseline. Four points, two rebounds for McBride. 20 to 13, your score, 743, first half. Vandemars working on McBride. McBride had a lot of body on him. Step back two by Aguando, a three. Aguado. Nice step back three by the man from Spain, 20 to 16. Corey Quest is looking for something because they've played 11 players in this game so far on the court to Fullerton seven. Fox counters. He's got eight points, 23-16. So uh, Cuesta tries to find their play as Fox is trying to find his rhythm. He's got two threes now and eight points. Ozell has got had seven quick ones. Second three by uh, Guado no good, Fox high for the rebound. McBride in the corner to Collins. Back to that one, two, two. Collins corner three, no good. And here's Solis. Head up, nobody stops the ball to Mark Fullerton. Little cold, deep three short by Wandy. Yeah, but Fullerton's lucky that Cuesta isn't hot either because you look at it right now, 23-16. Fullerton's not making it. Cuesta's not taking advantage of Fullerton being cold from the floor right now. Down low, Isaiah Clark can't get anything going down. He misses that one out of the pack of Guado comes. Clark got away with a travel on that last play. 23-16, your score, six minutes to play. And there's a lazy pass by Guado, turnover steal by Collins. As you see, Collins gets it back up to McBride. Want to set their offense. Clark on the baseline. Richardson, straightaway three is in and out. Wandy with the rebound. Down by seven, Cougars with the ball. Ozell. Aguado. Back to Ozell, guarded by Richardson. Fullerton, man to man, all first half. 10 on the shot clock, splits the defenders. There's Solis for three, that's Cradle's home. And Daniel Solis cuts the lead to four. That's only the third three-pointer of the game for Cuesta. They were two of 10 before that shot, seven of 20 from the floor. They were shooting 35%. Corey, they've got to shoot a little better if they want to stay against this very good Fullerton team. Richardson tries to drive baseline, gets it stolen by Vandemars and he Outlets to Ozell. Good defense by the man from the Netherlands. And here's Ozell with the hero step. No good. Rebound Clark. And here's a timeout taken by Fullerton College. And Perry Webster not too happy. 4.51 to play first half. 23-19 Hornets. This is Fullerton College basketball on Sportsnet USA.net. Corey Nalen, Mark Pavlovich, 
Ryan Osborne hit Ford here on the call at the Hornets Nest. Well, you like the fact the officials are letting him play the game. You look at it right now, Cuesta has not gone to the charity stripe in this game. Fullerton has only gone once. That means they're letting them play the game. Yeah, are people complaining behind us? I like this. You know us. You and I would rather see the game determined by players than officials deciding they need to blow the whistle a lot and be the star of the game. Both these teams aren't shooting well from the floor. If either one of these teams gets hot with 4.51 to go here in the first half, they could walk in at halftime feeling comfortable about where they sit in these playoffs. Out of the timeout, Inefario, Cuesta, Solis, Luandi, Ozell, and Moise. Fullerton with the ball with Johnson, Collins, Barnes, Mosley McBride, and Jesse Gee. Is anybody going to beat Saddleback? We don't know. We'll see. They lost one, so it could happen again. Jesse Gee out of Australia, the Fullerton International Connection. One player from Australia from Fort Fullerton, 11 international players. Fort Cuesta McBride says, I'll take the three and miss it short. Not the offensive set you want out of a timeout for the Hornets. And again, we haven't, we saw the Hornets going down low to start this game. Now they're settling again for those three point shots. If they don't fall for them, they're only up by four. They need to find that low presence game. And there's a three by Solis. He's got six points. Cuts the lead to one, 23 to 22. More important than the low post game, Mark, they need to get that mid-range game back going because the low post, not really there. That mid-range can open up the inside and outside. There's Barnes, kick out to Gee. Steps through, backboard, good. And Gee for two. So Gee, like the butter, puts it up there. He's smooth on the drive, 25-22, 3.50 to play. And there's Moiseev counting, no, on the three. Barnes up high for his third rebound. He starts to break and kicks out to Collins. Gee drives again, cut off by Elefteri. McBride with 3.30 to play, first half. Barnes cutting through the lane, right block, off glass, good. He's got six, nice entry pass from Jason Collins. And you like the fact he goes down low, then he cuts across the lane, finds an opening, has a little four footer. That mid range to short range is working now for the Hornets again to get up by five. But there you, Ozell had that seven quick points to get them back into this game. They're down by five, crosses over on Collins, kick out for Salute. And you see he was not ready. And into the game back in is Matthias Vandemars as Moiseev checks out. You see on the floor, Fullerton gliding down, nobody really huffing and puffing. You look at Cuesta and you see people sort of gasping for air out there, Corey. It's that time that Fullerton's playing the type of game they want to play against this Cuesta team. He drives in the lane again, leaves it for Johnson. Power dribble, double team taken away. And the up to Solis on that far side in the corner to Vandermars. Bounce pass, one-on-one in that area with Barnes. He has a height advantage. He's trying to use it. He gets in the lane, spins on the block. Pretty move by the big man, Rafael. Gets his first two, six, seven out of Cyprus. Just uses enough of that free arm. Not doesn't hook anybody, just gets a little push off. The referees, like we said, are letting him play the game. No whistle. Barnes, through the line, McBride. Cross course to Gee, he's in the lane again. Count the bucket, no, blocking foul on the left there you. Got to the right block just a little bit too late, Mark. Well, he was also inside the circle, so even if he gets there in time, the position that he takes down low, he's gonna have that block called against him on the play. Way you lose defensively is that first step, you get beaten, and again, I'm gonna say this Fullerton team's got a great first step on the floor. Gee at the line out of Brisbane, Australia. So you look at the, the differences. One player from international for the Hornets out of Australia, but you have 11. You got from Spain, Turkey, Cyprus, Netherlands, two from the Netherlands, Bulgaria. I mean, it's a nice job when you play 12 season overseas for Coach Rusty Blair. First free throw was good, second free throw on the way is good. 
So he does a nice job of converting that. He's normally a 50% free throw shooter because he hasn't been there a lot. So in other words, you're telling me we can't go to a team party for Cuesta because you'd have to check out all the food before we could grab a play? I just wouldn't eat. 2.06 to play, first half. Fullerton with a five point lead. And nice drive by Azell, kick out by Montovani. We'll reset the lineups in just a moment. Daniel Solis says, don't forget about me. Hits his third three of the first half, cuts the lead to two. So Fullerton with Richardson with the ball, Johnson back to Richardson, Fox, McBride on the near side, and Barnes in the corner. Zone defense employed by the Cougars. Fox hit a straightaway three earlier. Dribbles gets cut off behind the back. Wants another one, no, keeps dribble alive. In the corner to Richardson, in and out. Rebound, Yuandi, he starts the break. Ozell, they can take the lead with the three mark. They started off the game four to nothing. So Lee's gives them the lead with his fourth three. He's got 12 big points. And they reclaim a 30 to 29 lead with 1.15 to play in the first half. Numbers are almost identical for each one of these teams. But all of a sudden now Cuesta is 6 of 15 from three-point country. They got hot between Solis and Ozell in the second half of the second part of the first half. Barnes almost traveled. Seven to shoot. Fox in the lane. Scoop shot. Count the bucket. And there's a blocking foul. Rwandi was in the restricted area. And that's why they're going to call a blocking foul on him. His first personal. 15 foul. Ian Fox trying to convert to three-point opportunity. Well, you look at Ian Fox. Five of six from the floor already in this game. He's got three rebounds, one assist. He leads everybody in scoring with 12 points for Fullerton, Daniel Solis has got 12 points off the floor. He's four or five. Those are the two hot shooters for these teams. Fox and Solis are carrying the two teams. Solis for Cuesta, Fox for Fullerton. Fox converts, gives them a two point lead again. 45 seconds to play first half, a quick first half mark. Here's Iwandi driving on Barnes and he traveled. Good defense by Barnes. Rusty Blair wants the same call down low. But they've been getting that same traveling call all night long for Cuesta, Corey. The officials are saying that extra little half step is a travel. They've been consistent calling it against Cuesta. Yeah, they're not complaining about the travel. Down low, Johnson off the glass from Richardson for two. Now a four point lead. They're not, they're not upset about the travel. They're upset about the non-foul call down low because Barnes had the body on Iwandi. That's what they're upset about. 10 seconds of play in the first half. Ozell out to Solis. Pull up from two, 18 feet away. That's too close for him with two. Barnes, half court, pull up. Count if it goes, it does not go. And so that'll end the first half of play. And Mark is gonna talk to Perry Webster in just a moment as we have coming on during this half. They looked like they were in control and then Cuesta just seemed to take a breath, relax, started hitting from the outside. Rebounding's about even. What do you need to do to take away from this Cuesta team and increase the lead in the second half? I think we gotta do a better job defensively uh, getting out to shooters, let a few guys get some open looks that we can't do. Gotta do a better job in transition defense hustling back. I think good offense will lead to good defense. We need to take care of the ball, move the ball, get shots inside. And then when we do get inside, we need to go up strong and finish. I thought we were a little soft the way we went to the basket. We need to go up a lot stronger. Every once in a while, you go down low. You've got almost a double low post against this quest of team. It's worked because your guys have turned on it. But really, you haven't heated up from the outside, except Ian Fox, who's been good from the floor of the night. Once again, a little stagnation. Your defense really does the win or lose games for you. As much as everybody loves offense in basketball, your whole game tonight against this quest, the team's gotta be where you've gotta keep them under 40% from the floor. Yeah, we, I mean, it's always defense. We're always gonna hang our hat on our defense. That's just the way, uh, that's the way I know. That's the way you win championships, so that's the way we gotta do it. And when you look at this team, you're only going about seven deep. Do you shorten the bench when you get it? I know you've only got about a seven deep team all year long. Do you even shorten it more now and look at your five starters, all conference players that say win it for us? Yeah, we'll kind of see how the second half goes. Uh, nobody's in foul trouble as of yet, so we'll kind of see how it goes and see if we can just keep playing uh, 
you know, we'll, we got about seven or eight deep, so we'll stay with those seven or eight. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right, well, Perry, we're going to let you get back Thank to you. where you need to be. Perry Webster, head coach for Fuller to get back. Ryan, when you look at it, you heard what Perry had to say. It's all defense. Come on, man. When you talk about Fullerton, Perry just sort of shrugs off offense. What do you need to do if you're a Hornet? Because Cuesta looked like they were going to fold up like a cheap tent. Hey, they brought the motor home. They've stuck around in this game. One thing that Fullerton really needs to do on defense is switch a lot better. Cuesta started moving the ball around better towards the perimeter, and then they were able to take it inside because they weren't able to switch enough and it created mismatches. Fullerton needs to be on their toes, realize who's around them, and if anyone is cutting back door, seal it off quickly. Richardson always seems to go down low and goes down into the wing and looks for the shot. I was gonna ask Corey when he was off the air, how come Julian, I, he's such an athlete, I don't understand why this young man doesn't go down low and play low post more often. I think he could average 28 points a game. I know I'm just on the outside. I'm an old white guy watching basketball. You know what? This man's an athlete. I think the Hornets really need to look at their big players right now and say take care of the game. And that's something that Coach Barry Webster likes to have. He likes to have athletes, not just specific basketball players, but guys who are well-rounded. They, a lot of these guys in high school play track and field. They have that athleticism. They can run up and down the floor. That's something that he was pushing for early on in the game. He was telling them to get up the floor quickly before Cuesta could get back on defense. When you talk about sitting in the corners, that's what Cuesta has been giving them so far. That kick out, they just haven't been able to capitalize so far. It's interesting you say it was a track meet because you watch Cuesta every once in a while come back. You could watch players gasping for air as Cuesta was saying, wow, we're in a game that's going to go up and down, up and down. The Hornets never looked tired out there. Surprisingly, they looked like they had the upper hand. Then they allowed the bench from Cuesta, not the starters, the bench from this international basketball team get back in the game knocking down three-point shots and now they're only down by four with a second half to go. This game's really wide open. Number 11 against the number six. You're at home as the number six. You would think that would give you at least three more baskets. I'm gonna throw it at one other participant in this game. Referees are letting them play. Nobody's going to the charity stripe tonight. You like the way that's called? I do because it's a playoff game. It's something that you want to see from a playoff game. Let the game be decided on the floor, not by the whistles. If you have to, there's going to be a lot of contact. Just let it go as long as it's not over the top. All right, well, we'll see what happens as this second half gets ready to go as Mr. Nalen's going to step back in here and call the second half of action. Ryan Osborne tomorrow do a little baseball here on Sportsnet USA. Net. We're going to have television and radio going on. Remember, all our games are brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Looking for that newer used Toyota? Looking for that parts department open seven days a week? Or you just want to look at some really cool cars? Miller Toyota of Anaheim, located at Euclid in the 91, brings you all the games here on Sportsnet USA.net. Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports community college sports, high school sports, but most of all education. That's Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Oh, that's yours? And yeah, that's mine. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I and do with mine? Don't forget other sports on will be broadcast on sportsnetusa.net. So we're not just a one trick pony. We just don't call playoff basketball games, Mr. Pavlovich. There's a coach's show with Ryan Osborne here at Fullerton College where he talks to coaches. Coaches. Check your listings. For that, and then tomorrow it'll be Fullerton College baseball versus College of the Canyons. Fullerton College baseball nine and one on the season. They host Canyons, who's eight and one, coming off of a loss. That's going to be at 1 p.m. Shane Carrier had three home runs yesterday that tied a school record. And then next week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. starts for each day. Golden West College softball in the tournament starting at nine it's going to be long three days so we're going to be glad to call that one and fullerton college baseball on fullerton college tv next saturday at 12 p.m first half stats mark well you look at quest to college the bench kept them in the game 17 bench points they were 12 of 28 from the floor 42 percent six of 15 from three-point line 
40%, never went to the charity stripe. Fullerton, 14 of 31, 45% from the floor. Three of 12 from three-point country. That's not Fullerton. Three of four from the charity stripe. Perry Webster said you win this game by playing one thing, defense. They need to play defense, and they need to transition better offensively. He says they're too slow in their transition from defense to offense. If they can pick up that transition, they can win a little better out there. And, of course, you look at some of the players on the floor. Ian Fox has been that hot player for Fullerton. He's got 13 points. Daniel Solis has been the leading scorer for Cuesta College. Those are the two leading scorers. We'll see if the pace picks up. That's what Perry Webster would like. Coach Blair likes where they're at. He said if we can go to the charity stripe at least once in this game, we might have an opportunity to win. Yeah, he said uh, that they need to cut down on the turnovers and stop that mid-range game that Fullerton exploited in the first half. So we're underway for the second half of the California Community College Athletic Association first round playoff game that Fullerton is hosting backdoor Vandermeers for two. Oh, that was pretty, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Nice play coming out of there, and Vandermar gets the start in this second half, 34-32. We'll set that line. It was Fullerton with the same starting lineup as he did in the first half. Kick out, McBride pull up from the elbow. In and out, no good. Clark fighting for it, and Montovani gets the rebound. He gets the start in the second half, coming off the bench in the first. And there's Ozell, who really got them back in the game. Vandermar for three. Oh! Matthijs is nice, 35-34. You see who's picked up the pace? It's Cuesta. They're much quicker getting to the basket just to start off the second half. Matthijs on a 1-2-2 two, two on defense. Fox, McBride, Barnes down low. Richardson and Clark, the five on the floor. Richardson double team out to McBride. Sets his feet for three. Back rim to chase down Clark. Saves it from going out of bounds. On defense, Matthijs at the top of the zone. Fox drives, cross court pass over to Richardson. He's in the lane, that's a shot all game he can get and he gets it. He's got five points. It's interesting you bring that up Mr. Nalen because Ryan Osborne and I were just talking about Julian Richardson, he's an athletic freak. We both feel like he could go down and score against this Cuesta team at will. There's a kick out for three and that is Kadarim Ozell. He's got 10 points. And there's a timeout taken by Perry Webster. One minute, 41 seconds in this second half. And Un unhappy coach yeah. over at the Fullerton bench right now. You look at it right now, Corey Cuesta, 15 of 31. Eight of 17 for three-point country, 47%. You talk about percentages. You always tell me 38% is pretty good for three-point country. 47 is outrageous. Yeah, it means you're getting open looks, rhythm shots. 8-2 to two run to start this second half of play, and they've got the lead. So Clark, Fox, Barnes, McBride, and Richardson for the Hornets, as you see them on their screen. For the Cougars, Solis. Ozell, who hit the last three. Matthias, who scored the first five. Montovani down low with Ilatheriu. For Cuesta College, 38-36, Fullerton down by two, working against this zone. Double team at the elbow, Richardson again. All game, all day, Richardson for two. He's got seven, 38-38. And that's one of the things Coach Blair wanted to stop in the second half. Here's Ozell, bodied up by McBride, gets in the lane, kicks out. Left there you. Bounce pass down low, Montovani around Clark for two. Sweet bounce pass, something, an art that's been lost. You see a lot more from European players. You see Coach Blair with a team of European players. They understand the usefulness of a bounce pass. Julian Richardson getting in rhythm. You know, Mark, when you get your rhythm, when you get your shot in that rhythm, you get a free throw line, you get a layups, and you get easy chippies. Julian Richardson hit two shots within five feet, steps out to 15. He's got six in this half. Ozell just blows by McBride for two. Well, the quote, Coach Blair, are you going to cover that guy and guard him? We'll see if Julian Richardson says no. Nobody can in the rest of this half. Three minutes gone by, second half. Cuesta up by two. Here's Richardson again in the key, and he's got eight points. 
in the second half, 11 for the game, 42-42. I guess Julian Richardson listens to SportsNetUSA.net. So Lee's drives, no look pass to Montavani on the right box, kicks out the left area. Here's Ozell, wide open three, good ball movement, air ball. Here's Vandemars with 14 to shoot. Leaves it for Solis. Second chance, no rebound Montavani, but there's a loose ball foul on Barnes. You watch Cuesta, who's picked up their pace on their passes. They're not stopping now and looking for an opening. Something that you always talk about, what picks up the pace of the game? Getting rid of the ball and getting it out of your hand. They are passing exemplary in this second half. First personal, first team foul in the second half, 16.30 to play. Ozell bounce pass, Vandemar around Richardson on the right side, leaves it for Montavani. Around Clark, no good as Montavani hit the deck. Fullerton with a chance to take the lead. Tied at 42 with Fox. Richardson doing a nice job patrolling the middle. At the free throw line, just turned, leaves it for Barnes over Montavani for two. Eight points for Barnes and an assist by Richardson. That's his second. Ozell behind the back dribble. McBride playing solid defense, forces them to the baseline. The left area now blows by. And here's Ozell. Working baseline. Bounce pass and turnover. McBride. Richardson stops for three. Gets the three for Julian. 47-42. And Mark, that's not a shot he wouldn't have, he would have taken if he didn't hit those first four shots in the key. Well, on cue, Julian Richardson is taking over in this second half. Forty-six, forty-two. As that was a two, not a three. Left area working on Barnes, and he traveled as he lifted the pivot foot again. One of the things that they had to limit in this second half as Andres Aguado checks in for Karim Ozell, and we got a timeout taken by Cuesta College with 15.08 to play in the game. Fullerton 46, Cuesta 42. This is Hornet Basketball on SportsnetUSA.net. Julian Richardson now 6 of 12 from the floor. He's got 13 points of the game, a couple assists, one rebound. Ian Fox Hasn't done anything in the second half. Still sitting there at 13 points. Kenny Barnes, four or five from the floor. Those first three are shooting well from the floor. Kenny Barnes with eight points. Jesse Gee with four points. Blake McBride with four points. Isaiah Clark with two. Adam Johnson with two. And Jason Collins, who hasn't played a lot, is the only Hornet who hasn't scored tonight. Solis with 12 points. Ozell has heated up now for Cuesta. He's got five. And after that, Corey, well, it's like a bad stock market. It drops quickly, yet you look at Cuesta, who has so many players playing that has shot well as a team overall. They're still in this game against the Hornets early here in the second half. Don't forget, we have four Fullerton College men's players making the all-conference team. And there was one Fullerton College, college women's basketball player, Emily D. She made the second team all Orange Empire Conference. So congratulations to her, Emily D. 46-42 out of the timeout. Fullerton with the ball. Clark will inbound with Fox in the backcourt. They're joined by Richardson, McBride, and Barnes. Cuesta on defense. They're working with the 2-3, matching up out of that zone. Bride. Richardson had the hot hand. 10 of his 13. Short back rim rebound, Vandemar. Steal right there. Turnover and steal by Clark. Timeout taken or out of bounds? Timeout or out of bounds? Timeout or out of bounds? They say out of bounds. Fullerton ball, good hustle by Clark initially and Fox to finish it up. And once again, the defense picks up for the Hornets. When they look like they're going to miss a shot, the defense makes a big steal on an opportunity. It's being up by four with 14.42 to go in the second half. Make sure you check the athletic homepage for what's going on here at Fullerton College. Track and field currently going on here at Fullerton College. Softball, baseball, a variety of sports. 
here on the community college level. If you can't make it out, well, check the homepage here on sportsatusa.net. Like Mr. Nalen said, we're out there for baseball, softball, and football season, which isn't that far away, especially if you're Corey and I. It's right around the corner. Fox on the inbound. Richardson, his friendly post in the second half. Barnes in the corner, trying to dribble out of the double team. He does. McBride to Fox, short. Rebound, Bambamar, and went for the loose ball instead of letting it go out of bounds. As you see, feet slipped. Another turnover, unforced by the Cougars. That's now 11 turnovers in the game for Cuesta, only five for the Hornets. There's Richardson again floating through the air, misses that one, knocked away by Barnes, out of bounds. And in the first matchup, Fullerton only had eight turnovers. Cuesta had 13. West is winning the rebounding battle right now, Corey, 24 to 17, but it feels like the Hornets are dominating the board. And as you mentioned earlier, they tied 36 apiece rebounds in that first game. Here's Vandemar. Montovani back to Vandemar with Eleftherio with the ball. Now Solis on the far side with Aguado. Here's Eleftherio over Clark. No good, good defense by Clark, and here's McBride. Blair wants a foul on the body by Clark, and here's Richardson down the lane. Kick out to Fox for three, sets his feet, and gets the bucket. 16 points for Ian Fox, nice assist by Julian Richardson, his third. Montovani, the all-conference performer for the Cougars. Here's the left there. Two of their all-conference performers are on the bench now. Montavani, top of the key, working on Clark. Gets it blocked by Clark, but this time a foul on Isaiah. And Rusty Blair says it's about time. Perry Webster says just because he's working, the officials, they get the call either way. Montavani heads to the line. 4-2, Roberto, 6-8. Fourth in the state in rebounds per game. This is the first free throw attempt by Cuesta College tonight. Montovani, 15 points, make it 16 points. 11 rebounds on the season. So he knocks down the first one. Fullerton's only gone to the charity stripe four times in this game. Cuesta now goes the first time. So again, nice called game by the referees on the floor. Second free throw missed by the 54% free throw shooter. It's 49 to 43. Moise checks back in. He's another all-conference performer for the Cougars. He checks in for Vandemar. Fox splits the defense and turns it over. Nice steal by Aguado. 12-54 to play here at the Hornets' nest. First round playoff matchup for the Hornets. Backdoor cut, Solis kicks it for Montavani. Kicked out and stolen by McBride. Fox slows it up, wants a good shot, 49-43. You know, we saw Fullerton play a couple weeks ago. Here's Richardson out to Fox. Barnes underneath, double team, kick out McBride, open three, in and out. Rebound Montavani. The left aerial, checking in will be, be not heavier. On the next dead ball, so Lee's with the ball now with 18 to shoot, make it 14 to shoot, excuse me. Hedge by Clark, rolling is Montavani, and the three is missed by Ilaferio, but the rebound is chased down by Roberto. And if you're the Cougars, move the ball a little quicker. When they were doing that, they had success against this Fullerton defense, moving it, now they're holding it up just a little. So if you're Coach Blair, you had a team that can make those shots on quick passes, see if they pick it up against here against the Hornets now. Moisid out of Russia, but they're on the wing with eight. Pull-ups from 18, straight away, no. Rebound knocked out of there by Solis, chased down by Moisid. So third chance on this possession for the Cougars, drops it down low to Montavani. Isaiah Clark got away with the body. Here's McBride ahead of the pack, one-on-one. -on -one. Bounce pass up, Barnes, no good. Neither one of them had control of the ball, and here comes Cuesta the other way. Aguado, Montavani, stolen by Clark. Foul, 
by Clark. He gets away with a lot of physicality underneath these last two possessions. He does not. Corey, though, Cuesta players are looking for a pass instead of a shot. Once again, on that fast break, you had three players that touched the ball. All three players could have shot the ball for Cuesta. The Cougars need to find shooters that want to put the ball up on the floor. Coach Blair is going down and talking to people right now. They're only down by six. Quest is in this game. They just need to find a hot hand if you're a Cougar fan. Adam Johnson checking in for Isaiah Clark. Johnson in the first half scored two points, had two rebounds, also had an assist. He works against Montovani. Montovani backs him down, just brute force, used him underneath for two. Roberto. He's got seven points, 49-45 Hornet lead. Jason Collins now also in the game for the Hornets. Bounce pass to Barnes underneath, kick out Richardson, open three, looks good, is good. His third three of the, second three of the game. He's got 16 points. And it's back up to a seven point lead for the Hornets. At 52-45 with 10.30 to play in the game. Hevia, Vandemar in the lane, looking like a running back through the hole and scores two. All seven of his points coming in the second half, 52-47. That was a sleek cougar looking for its prey. Collins dumps down Barnes. He gives it over to Johnson, and Johnson short-armed it. Montavani clears it with his fourth. Ten minutes. Vandemar steps into a three. Back rim, rebound, chase down, and Vandemarge follows his shot. And a second chance opportunity. Give that to Roberto, who tips it, keeps the ball alive for the Cougars. Skip pass, he left there, real corner, three. No good. Another opportunity, third chance. Hevia off the glass, down the lane. He's got four points, Pignat. Roberto keeps that one alive. So the big man for the Cougars three times keeps the ball alive. Doesn't come down with the rebound. And Corey, we get a timeout with 9.21 to go. It's the Hornets 52, Cuesta 49. You're listening to Fuller to College Basketball on Sportsnet, USA.net. I'm going to go back to you, though. Rebounding sometime is lost that everybody thinks you ought to pull the ball down. But if you're a big man and you can keep it alive and go after it, now you give me that weird twisted look, I'm, aren't you? I'm just thinking, you know, he didn't do all that much about keeping that ball alive. The first one, Ian Fox tipped it out of his hands coming up from underneath as he was going up. So that Ian Fox helped him out on that one. This one, the ball slipped out of his hands because Adam Johnson was there as well, and he just got lucky enough that it just went off of his knee and went out, out top. Either way, it's all good. It worked to your advantage. So you take it either way you want to get it. So I get but, three rebounds? But just the activity itself out there on the floor, that's what created those second chance opportunities. So in other words, he's moving is what you're saying oh, as yeah. a big guy. I'm with you. He's doing a good job anyway. As long as you keep active and moving and making possessions happen, that's good. And on the Hornets' flip side, you keep feeling like they're going to run away with this game any second, yet Cuesta is that nasty little gnat that keeps buzzing your head and doesn't go away in this game. The Hornets haven't been able to find an answer for a Cougar team that keeps reviving itself. We'll answer this like a coach. Yeah, we should be running away with this if you're the Hornet coach because you're thinking we're hurting ourselves on the offensive side of the ball. We have one good possession and then we lose our minds. We have one good possession and then we lose our minds. That's what's happening. The defense from Quest is good. But the coach will say Fullerton's offense, well, he needs to do better. McBride for three out of the timeout. Clark tap. Four points for Isaiah Slim. 54-49. See, Lefterio, Vandemar, Hevia, Montovani, Vandemar just drives again, gets fouled from behind by Blake. And Blake McGride is wanting help because he figured he had help on Matthias, but he did not. So McBride, his personal foul, Matthias to the line. 
And we talked about the Hornets not getting free throws in the first game that they played, but you don't get free throws unless you have said more than once, you've got to make contact as an offensive player. Driving to the basket does do that as they knock down the first free throw. Vandemar, 54-50, cuts the deficit to four on the season. Averaging two points, shoots 50% from the line. Couple boards a game. And he's got nine points. Cuts the lead to three with 8.42 to play in the game. Collins, Clark, Barnes, McBride, and Fox. The Hornets have the ball up by three with 18 to shoot. Two three zone employed by Cuesta. Clark at the free throw line, kicks it out for Fox. He drives behind his back. Free throw line, bounce it. Nice tip by Vandemar and a steal by Montalvani. Good defense. Now that's peskiness, Mark. So peskiness and a bad offensive set. You got a chance to tie the game with the three, cut it to one with the two. They want to go down low to Montalvani. Heavy has it, kicks out to left area. Vandemar has been the difference in this game. Well, the second half at least with nine points. Six on the shot clock. Aguado working on Clark, or excuse me, Collins. Step back three, no good. Montalvani saves it from going out of bounds for Clark and Fox the other way. Next dead ball, Ozell will check in for Cuesta Fox with the ball. Up by three, 7.37 to play. Down low to Barnes, up and under, no good. Clark tries to follow. Montalvani comes away with the loose ball, his fifth rebound. So 54 to 51, sloppy play. And there's a three tied up is Binyat Hevia. And what was that, Mark? They've got Montavani now as having eight rebounds in this game officially from the floor. And when you look at Cuesta College too, 12 players have danced on this floor tonight for the Cuesta Cougars, 12 all together. When you look at them, out of those 12, eight have gotten the scoreboard. When you look at it though, 11 are on the statistical sheet right now for the Cuesta Cougars. 11 players out of 12 have done something offensively for this team. And Mark, this is what happened in the last game versus Cypress to Fullerton. Their offensive set, they got out of rhythm and got a little bit nervous. Here's McBride trying to calm them down. No, rebound Vandemar on the far side. And when the things got tough, Mark, they rushed their offensive sets and they lost that game 71 to 68. And he left Theriot calmly Puts in a three, his fifth point, and there's a three-point lead for Quest. It's nervous time here at the Hornets' Nest. If you're a Hornet fan, 57-54, they're down. Here's Fox in the lane for two, no good. Rebound, gets his own rebound, taken away by Montavani. Out of the pack is heavier. Running two on three and taken away by Richardson, but fouled on the backside by McBride. And so it looked like it looked like it was a miss run down the floor. It looked like it was going to be a turnover, but you get foul. a call by if it was it a was, foul. It was a foul from behind by McBride reaching in. Okay. I always like to ask my partner to yeah. my left. He's truthful. <laughs> He'll always tell you when there's a real foul. Good hustle by both teams, but yeah, you can't reach in like that. And there's a timeout taken trying to inbound. Both teams are left with three in the final 627 to play in this game, the first round matchup of the 2016 CCCAA playoffs here on SportsnetUSA.net. Corey Nalen and Mark Pavlovich at four. Ryan Osborne on the call for an exciting first round matchup. And when you look at both of these teams, Cuesta had three all-conference performers. Fullerton had four all-conference performers. Cuesta averages 75 points a game, Fullerton 72. They rebound roughly the same. They shoot threes roughly the same. This is what you expected. It's Fullerton comes in at number six in SoCal as quest at number 11. And don't forget round, this is round two, I should say. Round one was a play-in games on Wednesday. Round three next Wednesday, March 2nd. Fullerton hoping to get there. Round four is March 5th. And that'll, March 5th will get you to the state playoffs on the 12th and 13th up in Las Positas. Cuesta Bench has 31 points to Fullerton's six. 
So going so deep has kept them in the game. Yeah, that's been expected too because Fullerton's bench won't score much. As Barnes checks in, Collins checks out. Another yeah. turnover for Cuesta Corey. 14 in the game, the Hornets sitting at seven. That's not bad. Seven turnovers in an entire game. Back to the zone, and that zone is causing trouble. Barnes and Richardson are really gonna have to execute the final six minutes of this game against that zone for Fullerton's offense to work. Here's McBride, pushes off. There's Barnes, leaves it for Clark, down low. Out to Richardson for open three. That's good by the sophomore. That's why he came to Fullerton College to make big shots like that. Julian ties it up at 57 apiece, 5.52 left. And a good find by Isaiah Clark underneath out of that double team. Here's Ozell, Eleftherio, Montovani, Hevia, and Vandemar on the floor. Cuesta has it with Ozell. Kick out, Eleftherio, second three. No, not going to get it now. With McBride. McBride, near side, running across your screen. Fox with the ball. Richardson hit the last three. Barnes at the free throw line. Clark underneath. Fox thought about a three. He drives. Kick out. Richardson pulls up from 17. No, drops down to Barnes, who was in the key a long, long time. This is the easy three-footer. Rebound by Eleftheria. 5-10 to play. Nice no call again. Perry Webster wanted a foul. No call on that one. Rebound by McBride. What's that for McBride? That's got to be at least seven or eight rebounds for Blake. Fox tied at 57. Richardson thought about the three. He brings it back out to Fox. He drives the lane. Bounce pass. Barnes reverts layup for two. A nice drive by Fox. Nice bucket by Barnes. Five rebounds for McBride. High screen and roll. Montavani spins in the lane. He left Ariel over to Ozell. Back to Ozell from Heavier. Off the backboard, no rebound number six. And Fullerton up by two, slows it down. So 59-57. You know what you want right here, Mark. If you're a Fullerton fan, you want to kick it down low and kick it out for a three. You work in and out. Richardson. Drive, splits the defenders, puts it up, puts it in, and a continuation foul on the put up on the arm. So, this is what you expect out of the team's leading scorer, Mark, averaging 14 and a half points a game. Hevia will check out, Solis will check in, along with Vandemar. And Julian Richardson in this second half is putting on him. He's got 18 points in the second half, 21 in the game, looking for 22. One this is his first free throw in this game. When you need big buckets, he's gotten them tonight, except for a free throw, as he can't convert on a three-point play. But they have the lead, 61 to 57. Ozell, Solis, who had four threes in the first half, been quiet here in the second. Montavani turns, faces, bricks it. So Fullerton with 3.47 to play, three timeouts remaining. Cuesta with three timeouts as well. Richardson, Barnes underneath, tries to leave it for Clark. Left-handed bucket is good, undercut by Vandemar. And Vandemar picks up the foul. Clark gets the bucket, his sixth, looking for seventh. And that's a little home cooking, Mark. That's what the politicking does for you. Rusty Blair had it earlier. Perry Webster has it now. So the politicking and the race, who can be the best presidential candidate, is at, if you will, on the court right now. It's even. But the score, Fullerton has a lead, 63-57, to 57, with 3.36 to play in the game. Well, we'll see if there's politicking going on tomorrow. A little baseball here on SportsNetUSA.net. Nick Fuscardo has his team playing good baseball. Ryan Osborne will be calling the action along with Josh Calera. I was, was going to say, Nick Fuscardo's right there. Yeah, Nick's sitting behind us. Nick sitting behind us, chewing a little gum, looking handsome as ever. Scratch handicap golfer sitting up there. That's the Tiger Woods of Fullerton College right by Ryan Osborne. Nick Fuscardo is doing it right there. 
Nick will be out here tomorrow. Jason Smith is out here. Like we said, it's the who's who of coaches right now here on the court. Tom Deep now sitting across from us. He's with Brian Crooks. Timmy Burns is down the way. I'm sure you'll find the volleyball staff, the baseball team behind us. The women's basketball team is sitting across from us, Corey. So a great turnout here at the Hornets Nest. Want to thank all the young men and young women for supporting Fuller College Sports all year long. And of course, the president of the college out here earlier. Don't forget Fullerton Hornet Night at Angel Stadium. If you're interested in going to an Angel game, tickets are a little pricey, but all the money goes back to Fullerton College. And Isaiah Clark out the line. Missed his first free throw attempt today. Slim second is good. Seven points for Slim, 64-57. Fullerton, seven straight points. Ilatheriu, work wants to go down low to Montavani. Montavani comes up for the high screen. Switch on the screen. Working against the smaller Barnes on the right box. Barnes is holding his own. Good defense by Kenny. Ilatheriu in the lane. Kenny undercuts and count the bucket. No, it rims out. Blocking foul on Mr. Barnes. Ilatheriu to the line for two. Barnes doesn't get there in time as he switches off to try and get him down low. Goes down low, but actually, Corey, he steps underneath him as the player goes up in the air. And every time you do that, well, maybe us little guys get away with low bridge and somebody, but the big guys never do. Now, I have been a foul on either one of you guys. You left there, you know. Rafael out of Cyprus. Limassol, the town or city, out of Mandulitis. I know I'm butchering all those names, but if you're listening in Cyprus or Turkey or Spain, go ahead and hit us up on sportsnetusa.net. And we'll get back to you as Rafael, 6'7", 215-pound sophomore, averaging 11 points a game, three assists go along with six and a half rebounds. So he has a chance to cut this Fullerton lead to five with two makes. It was 57 to 57 with about six minutes to play. Fullerton scored the last seven. So Lothario with Montovani in the key with Vandemar. First free throw is up and good by the sophomore. Fullerton now with six team fouls. The Quest to Cougars with only two with 312 to go here in the second half. And the second free throw gets a friendly bounce and they'll take it. Stems a seven point run by the Horn at 64-59. Fox with the ball on that far side. Clark high screen Barnes now with the Richardson and McBride. Clark to McBride. Barnes weaves to Fox with eight, seven, six. Bounce pass, Barnes underneath puts it in. So Kenny Barnes with 10 points. Ian Fox with his fourth assist. Making his third assist. And there's another turnover by the Cuesta College Cougars. They can't cut into the seven point lead that the Hornets have and the Hornets look to extend. So Kenny Barnes, Mark, he's not a three point threat at all. 15 feet and in, he'll get you a lot of buckets and he has a knack for getting underneath and open when his point guard gets into the key. Well, and Ian Fox, who leads the team in assists with almost seven a game, once again keeps his head up when he's dribbling the ball and finds that open player. Down low, Barnes again, he rushed it, but it doesn't matter, it's still good. He's got 12 points, two timeouts remaining for Question, they use one of them. At the 209 point in the game, Fullerton 68 expanding to a nine point lead. Quest of 59. This is Hornet basketball on SportsnetUSA.net. Richardson 21 points. Fox with 16. Barnes 14. All three of those in double figures. Clark with seven. Gee four. McBride four. And Johnson two. Jason Collins hasn't scored for the Hornets and for Cuesta. So Lease with 12 with Ozell also with 12 points. Ozell has six assists leading both teams in assists. Vandemars has nine heavier 
Eleftherio, Montavani all have seven. Aguado with three and Peterson with two. Sixty-eight, fifty-nine. Eleftherio will take the ball out. Solis wearing number three in green. Ozell number five, fifty-five. Is Montavani and Vandemars is 21 in green. The Hornets, 12 Clark, 11 Barnes. Fox right there guarding the ball. McBride and Richardson on the floor. Vandemars gets in the lane again and then stolen away. Quick hands by Slim. Another turnover. Costly with under two minutes to play. Pressure picks up. Here's Fox, kick out, three, long, Barnes, crucial rebound, no good rebound, on the rebound, and here's the left area out of the pack. And there's a push, continuation, count it, as left area got the step on Clark, continue with the long gliding stride for two. He's got nine points, looking for 10, cuts the lead to seven as Aguado checks in for Vandemars. Well, if you're a Cougar fan, one of the things you'd look at is 17 turnovers in this game, and unfortunately that happens every once in a while because the Hornets have picked up 12 points on turnovers. For the Hornets, they only have seven turnovers in this game so far. So the Cougars trying their best, playing an excellent season so far. Coach Blair once again getting him in the playoffs, and he's done an outstanding job for this Quest to Cougar team at the helm all the years he'd been there, all 24 years. What a great head coach for a wonderful program. 68-62. Fullerton with 90 seconds of play. Barnes, two on one with Clark, he brings it out. Wants to use some of that clock, and they do with 122. Almost an over and back down low. Dangerous pass, Barnes saves it, pushed by Lefthario. And that'll Barnes, baseline out of bounds or sideline. That's only the third team foul committed by Cuesta. Cuesta can be aggressive, only three team fouls, like you said, Corey. So they can really go after the basketball right now. Clark on the inbound of Fox, back to Clark, and there's a timeout taken or a push. They say a push on Solis. 113 remaining. The officials for tonight calling the good games. Savannah Azizian, Danny Yi, and David Allegria. This one on the baseline. Fox to inbound. He triggers to Richardson. Ozell with the foul. Fifth team foul. Trying to extend this game with the fouls. It's only a two possession game. Fox in the backcourt, and there's another foul. So when you look at free throw percentages, McBride in the season shoots 62%. Ian Fox shoots 85%, that's 12th in the state. Richardson shoots 80%, that's 32nd in the state. McBride on the inbound to Richardson, and he'll be the one that goes to the line for a one and one opportunity. Timeouts left in this game. Fullerton's got three. Quest has got one left in the game. And Coach Blair talking to the team, talking about trying to explain to his players. He was asking them to go for the steal, not just commit the foul on the play. If you commit the foul on the play going for the steal, he didn't have a problem with that. He wanted you to try and steal the ball, and if you got caught for a foul, that was also acceptable. Missed his only attempt earlier. He's got 21 points. Make it 22. 80% free throw shooter, 32nd in the state. Has a big game tonight, 69 to 62. So Richardson, with the three threes he's made tonight, has 50 on the season. And he's got 23 points and back up to an eight-point lead. It's a three-possession game. 
Ozell. And Etheria drives on Clark, makes the layup. Good drive by Letheria. Full court pressure now with 57.4. Six point lead for the Hornets. McBride to trigger it. Bounce pass into Fox. Back to McBride. Richardson who made the last two on the one and one. He gets pushed again. And that's either going to be on Aguado or Hevia. They're gonna say Aguado. 52.2 left, 70 to 64. Jason Collins will check into the ball game for Isaiah Clark. A little bit better free throw shooter. A little bit more speed on the outside. Richardson with 23 points, he hit the last two. Both coaches doing a wonderful job here tonight and on the season. Richardson misses, so it's two point two possession game. Hevia working on Richardson gets to the lane, lays it up, lays it in. Four point lead for the Hornets. Hornets don't want to foul as Cuesta is in the bonus, and they foul before a turnover occurs. So Aguado's third. Julian Richardson back to a one and one, so they're not in the double bonus yet. That's only the ninth team foul. Yeah, and the thing is now where it comes down to it, if you're the Hornets and you realize the Cougars are going to keep coming after you and maybe making those fouls, when you get these opportunities, you have to knock it down. You're only up by four. Don't forget, tomorrow, Fullerton College Baseball at 1 p.m. versus College of the Canyons. 23 points for Julian. And 24. And don't forget, all broadcasts are brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Timeout on the court with 41.4 seconds. It's the Hornets 71, the Cuesta Cougars 66. You are listening and watching Fuller to College Basketball on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ed Fort, Corey Nalen, Ryan Osborne behind me. Want to thank everybody all year long for watching and listening to all our broadcasts here on SportsnetUSA.net and especially Miller. Toyota of Anaheim, located at Euclid in the 91. They make all these broadcasts possible. Yeah, Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports community college sports, high school sports, but most of all, education. That's Miller Toyota of Anaheim. And of course, tomorrow, one more broadcast. A little baseball on SportsNetUSA.net, so make sure you get up early with us. Corey Nalen and his minions of Media Madness. Be calling the action out there. Ryan Osborne, the host of the coaches show, be doing a little television here on Sportsnet USA.net. Cuesta College has played an excellent game tonight. The number 11 team against the number six team. At times, it looked like they were going to take over the game. The Hornets have just bounced back enough in this second half. It's been the Richardson story in this second half that has kept the Hornets in the lead. 24 points now. 21 in this second half, Mark. 22 in the second half. And he's got 25. Ozell left, he left there you. Aguado over Collins, contested three. That's no good, rebound. And a foul from behind or a push after the strip. So they're gonna get Kenny Barnes on the push of Daniel Solis because Solis came through, the ball came down and he took it away. And that's the eighth team foul. So if it's on the ground, it's a one and one. 72, 66. It is one and one and connects. Five point deficit for the Cuesta College Cougars. So it's a Cougar weekend, Mark. College of the Canyons Cougars, Cuesta College Cougars. Second free throw is also good. So 72 to 68, 30.6 remains. And there's Jason Collins. He gets fouled. And Collins, Mark, hasn't been to the line that many times this year. So his free throw stats are kind of skewed. So 42 triples, though, on the season. Coach Blair's done a really great job again for this Cuesta Cougar team. 
14th playoff appearance in his 24 year career. And Collins misses the first free throw, so they're still in it with 28.8, five time coach of the year. Last time coming in 2012 as Collins connects the five point lead. Perry Webster looking to get those coaches of the years in the future. He's only in his first season. Kick out, he left area over Fox, short. Barnes is fouled. So with 19.1, he needs these two free throws, Mark, to get it to a three possession game. 73-68, and he's a 54% free throw shooter. So actually it's a double bonus, so he gets two. But he needs these two. 19.1 to play. Barnes with 13 points with the make. So this ball game much different than the ending to the Cypress game. The Chargers took control and won that by 371 to 68. Fullerton played more confident. Stuff. Second free throw, needs a bounce, doesn't get it, 74-68. Ozell for three. Front rim to Collins with 10 seconds, eight seconds. He gets fouled, and Fullerton, Mark, is going to head to the third round of the playoffs. Look, now they're going to either face on Wednesday Chafee College or Mount Sac on Wednesday, March 2nd, the third round of the CCCAA, Men's Basketball SoCal Regional. And if you look at the way, and, and I'm not quite sure, Corey, now do you, because of the seeding, if you were the better seed, do you host that game? Don't know. Okay. First free throw is made, 75 to 68. My expert to my right, Ed Ford, said, yes, that's what happens. You do get to host the game. So if Mount Sack beats Chafee tomorrow, Fullerton will host the game. If Chasey, Chasey, Chafee wins, they're traveling. And there's the final buzzer. Fullerton improves the 22 and 7 on the season with a 76 to 68 victory over Cuesta College Cougars. Perry Webster's first playoff win as a head coach. Yeah, and really when you look at it, defense won the game for the Hornets. I mean, their offense went away every once in a while. 17 turnovers they created, 12 points on those turnovers. That all comes from stifling defense. And of course, when you look at the Cougars, they go 12 deep. I gotta give Coach Blair a great deal of credit. When you can go 12 deep on a team, keep that team in the game that just shows you the experience this man has and that's why he was five times coach of the year and took this team in the playoffs 13 times but tonight it was all about coach webster and getting his team to the next game so again as you just heard if mount sack beats chafee we'll have the home game and we'll be here uh, we'll be here if fullerton is Hosting the game, sportsnetusa.net will be here to bring you that game live on video as our football coaches walk by, give us a wave for the good night as the Hornets come away victorious in a big game tonight. So again, 76 to 68 is a victory for Perry Webster's first victory.